Mike from uh, sunny Ireland. Um, I hope you're all keeping well out there. Um, this is um, a Renaissance guitar. Uh, it was popular in the 1500s, especially around uh, the, the 1550s. We know it must have been very popular. There was a huge number of books published for it, um, especially in France, in Paris. The king, apparently, um, I think it was Henry II, Henri, um, and he played guitar, and as was always the case when the king played the guitar, uh, there was a lot of guitar activity because um, the rest of the court liked to play the guitar and there was work for guitar teachers and guitar performers and composers and publishers. So we have something like nine books from the 1550s. And if you were to just Google Renaissance guitar or four course guitar, I'll explain that title in a second. But if you Google that, you'll get loads of links to loads of things. Um, including most of this music online, uh, you know, facsimiles of the, of the original publications. Um, it's called a four course guitar because it was four sets of strings, if you can see them here. Um, it's tuned just like a ukulele. So if you have a ukulele at home, um, you can try and investigate this music. And uh, I think what would make it most suitable would be if on the fourth string on your ukulele you have a have a low string rather than the usual high octave this is tuned as i say just like ukulele g c e a the g string is in octaves because we have two just like a 12 string guitar the uh, c string unison e string unison and the a string first course is just one string so it's obviously in unison. Um, it was traditional on lutes and guitars and everything around this time to very often, uh, nearly, pretty much nearly exclusively, to have the stop, top string single. Even if there was a, a peg for it or a hole for it, it seems to always have been left single. And what makes most sense to me at any rate is that in the pre-machine age, if you were trying to get gut strings to match and to get two strings um, of that thinness to match and to be in tune and to be true uh, would have probably driven you insane. Also, they broke a lot, so that would have been very expensive. So anyway, they were left single traditionally. Um, this is an instrument made by a Slovenian uh, maker, very beautiful instrument, um, the maker Ivo Magarini. You can see a beautiful back on it there. Um, and uh, this, the frets on these instruments were tied on uh, they weren't set in the, the, the neck like in modern guitars um, and that would allow you to replace them which would give your instrument a new lease of life um, and also you could fine tune your kind of tuning on it. Um, I'll play you a piece. This is a piece by Gregor Bracing that comes from one of those, those French books from the mid 1500s, 1553 to be exact. Um, in the original publication, which I just uh, printed off the internet, um, it looks like this. This is how music was written in those days. There was four lines to represent each of the guitar strings in this case. Um, and then a letter was placed on the line to tell you where to put your fingers, you know, what fret to use. So if, if you weren't to put any finger down, they used the letter A. I had nothing to do with the note A, it was just indicating that there was no fingers. If you were to put your finger down on the first fret, they'd give you a letter B. And then for the next fret, a letter C. Um, and then for the rhythms, they would just write the rhythms on top um, to indicate what to play. It takes maybe a little, little bit of time to get used to it, but any guitarist who's used to tablature off the internet for, for rock songs or anything like that, it, it's not a really hard transition. Um, and especially, obviously, if you can get a recording of the piece you're interested in playing and you know what it sounds like, you can work it out. And then you have tons of, of original publications you can access and not just the notes, but actually where um, the, the original compiler, probably the composer, where they actually wanted you to put your fingers. Um, okay, however, as well though, you can find this same piece I'm gonna play by called Beati Quorum and you can find it and again i found this online i think i bought it from a mel bay publication and here it is in normal notation so you can look at it either way it's a very beautiful piece it's from a sam beati quorum means for our blessing which uh yes very very poignant for our times